Good morning, folks. Let's thank Webcams de Mexico for capturing Popo's hello yesterday morning. By now, many are clamoring about the Helio tail, the tail of the solar system, like a galactic comet, an expected and much sought after data piece that ends up going to David McComas at the Southwest Research Institute, PI on the IBEX mission. They used ENAs to map it. Now, you'll remember this is how they mapped the magnetic ribbon on the heliosphere as well. These ENAs bombard the inner system, like we see on Titan. FYI, the heliosphere is fading just like Earth's magnetosphere, which allows more energy to come into the system, and which could have also set off the chain of events described in Energy from Space 2.0. Sun is losing magnetic field strength, coronal holes are letting more energy out into the system, to the planets, while the helioshield lets more cosmic rays in from the outside as well. Quick reminder folks, global heating is not made up. Heat records are there, they just struggle to keep ahead of the cold records, and both bowing before the floods. In fact, 2013 is seeing cold records beating heat records, with the rain again laughing at both of them. Coming to the buoys, now folks, it's one thing to see hundreds of feet of movement in one day, fast geologically, but too slow for a tsunami. It's completely different to see 200 foot swings back and forth every few minutes for a couple hours, when no other buoys notice a thing. No ships notice a massive wave, and no coastline gets hit with one. We call that false data. If anything, underground shaking near here is being read more intensely by the sensors. That could be possible, but the 200-foot swings by the minute are likely not accurate quantitatively. Got great news for the east coast of the U.S. Chantel got lucky enough to catch Hades Hills, and the tropical wave was stopped in its track to be sheared apart. Can't say the same here. Typhoon initially judged to hit Shanghai has been moving further south every day and is now expected to directly hit Taiwan. Southern Australia taking storms along with much of northern New Zealand. Mediterranean zone under thunderstorm watch as they pop at sundown there. Coming to the U.S. where major storms took out my power briefly last night. For today, a power high is pushing out in a clockwise pattern while the lows of focus yesterday, north of New England, will suck that southern air north and converge in the Gulf states. Another low out west is driving the air north to another convergence there. Looking at the wind map, you reveal that outward clockwise central motion with a weak convergence that I do expect to strengthen as the day goes on here. And you see the same thing further west as well. I agree with Noah about this watch zone, but I would also recommend high alert this afternoon for tornado activity in the southeast. Couple unusual quakes yesterday, Gulf of Aden and Italy. Pacific Ridge rumbled again this morning, but my top concern is New Zealand. Five of the 11 4.5s and higher of the last 30 days happened in the last 48 hours. That's an uptick to watch in the days ahead. Solar flaring has been a disappointment this week. Might as well have not had delta spots on the disk because they failed to produce and are now all but gone. It would taste a lie to tell you that this delta spot was still dangerous. Then again, it is leaving the Earth-facing view and could certainly begin to pop then. Opinions on Earth-facing quiet coming in a few days, by the way. Stonyhurst heliographic, full sun indicates two active regions incoming, but neither looks terribly impressive on the intensity gram. Perhaps more will crest today. Minor geomagnetic storm from yesterday barely even produced auroras for us to see. It is now waning along with the instability. With the exception of the electron flux, which actually took another cut this morning. There could be some of that coronal whole stream influence after all, or it could be the second of two nearly simultaneous eruptions visible on Noah's endless spiral from days ago. If you look close here, there are two there, and they might have gained some separation on their way to Earth. Meanwhile, we know about that filament eruption that is headed our way right now. NASA expects impact late on the 12th or early the 13th like we showed yesterday and NOAA's endless spiral is now updated but showing impact about 24 hours later. Either way, around that time the corona holes marked in red will be facing Earth, potential quake watch arriving with them. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.